you mentioned about your encounter with the police. You got pulled over. Talk about what happened and what was going through your mind because you know how sometimes encounters with police officers and African Americans doesn't always end with a friendly outcome. Yeah, no, for sure. I was uh, going to my friend's house in, in Virginia uh, on the first occasion and uh, got pulled over for not using my uh, turn signal and going down 77 there. And I was like, okay, my bad. And uh, comes back, hands me, I think I got a ticket for that. And he, he does the old, here's your license and registration back. Wait a minute. Yes, it's a nice car. You got guns, drugs, or weapons in here? I was like, no, I sure don't. Um, and he was like, well, mind if I search your vehicle? And I was like, no, go ahead. And I was just like, not really understanding the moment there until I talked to my family after. And, and uh, I was, once I realized, it, I quickly realized they asked me to get out of the vehicle. I stood about 20, 30 yards away, had three other cops show up and went through my whole car, didn't find anything. I had just got my car cleaned that morning before I left, so it was spotless. And um, and so that was, they were like, well, we didn't find anything, have a good day. And it was like, yeah, I told you that before this 30 minute ordeal. <laughs> and so went, on, went upon my way, I was pissed, I was frustrated, called my mom, and then went, to, uh, this was fast forward, no, that was 2010. Fast forward to about 2017, 2016, um, going to the golf course, I believe. And uh, and I'm going down Highway 3 here, right here in, in Kannapolis, and a car pulls out right in front of me. And so race car mentality, you pull out right in front of me, you got you got a couple seconds before I – I want to hit you, but I'm not going to hit you because then it's obviously insurance and stuff. But I'll get, I'll get this close. And if, if my girlfriend's riding with me, she she hates that. She freaks out. I'm like, chill, I know what I'm doing. But I got right up on the bumper of this car, and I'm like, what the hell? Go. So I slammed on my horn to go because I was going – it was, it was 55. So I was going probably 60 and 55, and this car pulls out going 20. And so I slam on brakes and everything. So I honk on the horn, throw on their hazards. So I'm like, okay, obviously this person – is struggling with something. Their car is a beat. It was an old beat or two. So I look, nobody coming, double yellow lines, hazards on. So I go around them, pull up to the stoplight, three cops get out, guns out of their holsters, not pointed at me, not pointed at me. They're like, pull over here in this parking lot. And I was like, oh, undercover car. And they were like some bounty hunter type people. Right. And so I'm like, okay. So I'll pull over here and I'm like pissed off at the whole situation. Like, it was like, you guys pulled out in front of me. And it was like, well, you passed us on a double yellow line. Well, you pulled out in front of me. Well, you passed us on it. It's like, all right, I ain't going to win this argument. And so they come over and it's like, uh, uh, I'm driving a Lexus at this time. And, uh, and he walks over and he was like, man, this is a nice car. Can you afford it? What do you do? And I'm like, what kind of boy job is that? Yeah. And I said, it doesn't matter what I do. And yes, I can afford it. And I, I was like, yeah, yeah. And I just, because I wanted to say, yeah, I can have you one here tomorrow too, big boy. But I didn't. <laughs> because then, because then that would have been another hashtag. So just, that's, that's, you know what I hate? I hate when they do that, when you pull me over and you get, look, you can either write me a ticket and tell me to slow down, but I'm not going to let you lecture me mm -hmm. and give me a ticket. Now you're yeah. going to be able to do one or the other. And whatever you do, don't patronize me. Man, this mm -hmm. is a really nice car. Bro, just go ahead and write the ticket. And let me yeah. be on your way because I ain't got a whole lot of conversation for you. I ain't got yeah. anything. I just want to get on my way. Yeah. But yeah. you did. You. I, I'm reading that you had a cousin mm -hmm. that lost his life at the hands of the police. Yep. Yep. Um, I was eight years old, I believe. Whatever, however old you are in fourth grade. I remember fourth grade. And uh, we were in somewhere. We may have been here. I, I want to say we were in Indiana or something at a basketball tournament for my sister. And uh, I remember running through, uh, I remember eating one of those big, remember those big fat, you still get them, the big fat pickles in the packages, the spicy Yeah, ones. I don't I don't mess with pickles, no. Okay, okay, all right. Well, I remember having one of those and running around the gym and whatever. And I'll never forget this day, we were in the parking lot and I just hear the most terrifying scream from my mom. And I'm like, eating my pickle. I'm like, what's going on? What happened? 
and it was our cousin uh, Sean uh, was shot and killed uh, the night before and or maybe early that morning I think it was early that morning 2 or 3 a.m that morning but they said um, they said that they were at the uh, gas station there in Knoxville at a Weigel's there in um in, in knoxville and they were playing loud music like a little little block party at the gas station right. and they said the clerk got scared of of all the black people there called the cops and um and they said that um there was one officer on the side of the car and there was one officer at the back and they said my cousin let's go reach for a gun but there wasn't um there was a gun but it wasn't on his side of the car and that was uh, that was that. He was shot in the back. Wow. Yep. So that that had a lot to do with your perception of how the the unfair treatment and how sometimes and how police look at black motorists as opposed to how they look at our counterparts. Uh, then at eight years old, I was just like, no, not then, going. but now. Oh yeah, now uh, yes, yeah. for sure, for sure. I got a total different understanding. This, when I was about 14, I was like, oh, I see why he was killed now. Right. You know, uh, then I was just like, wow, we just lost our cousin, you know, and that was right. that. My parents, everybody else knew, but when you're that young, you don't think about it. You just, you just think about a loss in the family. And my family still grieves over that to this day. Um, you know, it's funny. I, was, I just passed through Knoxville um, for our Christmas break and you see uh, a Weigel's and, it, and all you can think of is, is that moment. And, uh, and so, yeah, uh, we, we've lost, uh, we've lost family to that. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button to become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we always do something before two something.